And this is probably a lot of calories to start your day out. Oh my God, what is this? Wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> I just had a revelation. I want to eat this for the rest of my life. Dude, I'm back in my grandma's kitchen. The US just leveled up food-wise. Welcome to Greenville, South Carolina. So many of you may or may not know this is where I'm from. And this is a city we often come back to every time we visit the US. So in this video, we are going to try three local restaurants so Phil can try real Southern food here in the USA. Here we go. A full day of eating at three Southern restaurants. But not just southern food, this is soul food. Hearty, home-style, down-to-earth meals that make your soul smile. We are about to eat some of the best dishes that I have had during our US travel so far, so stick around for all three stops because it is just getting better and better. All right, so our first stop on our southern food tour is going to be this place called Biscuit Head. And it's this place not too far from downtown Greenville. It's this big hall and it's a very industrial style building, but we decided to do takeaway and we're gonna enjoy our meal here in this nice open downtown Greenville section. This place specializes in biscuits and this biscuit specifically is unique because it has a fried green tomato on it with some hollandaise sauce, some brie on there. And I really want Phil to try this explosion in the mouth. Here we go. So it is one o'clock, perfect breakfast time for us because we start late into the day when it comes to food. And this apparently is a breakfast item because that place Biscuit Head also closes at two o'clock. So it's a morning place. I have to ask Deanna again and again, what exactly is this called? It's a fried green tomato biscuit. Okay, so fried green tomato biscuit. So you have two poached eggs, there's a tomato, two fried green tomatoes, and then we're gonna pour this hollandaise on it. They were nice enough to give it to us separately since we got takeaway. When I think of biscuit, um, the British way, it's a cookie, but brisket here means these fat, beautiful beautiful breads and then we have thicker bread i guess this is the fried green tomato on it yes. we have two of these by the way yeah. one over here one over here and then a poached egg big slice of tomato and then this hollandaise cheese sauce this looks so they gave crazy. us a generous amount of the sauce on the sides so. i kind of want to try this first <laughs> let me see go for it Ooh, that's really nice really? wow what is that it looked like the tomato or like some type of pico. But it's very slightly spicy. Oh, nice. Thank Consistency you. of like a pumpkin soup. I know you're not supposed to drink that. Okay, how do I eat that? Okay, you cut it up and eat it. Should be poached. Let's see how good that poaching is. Oh, no, that is a hard-boiled hard -boiled egg. egg. That is not poached. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> We're gonna put a little bit more of that sauce on there. If this is a standard breakfast in America, then <laughs> hell yeah. I don't think it's standard, but I it's like it. Amazing. And I understand why people are a little bigger sometimes. Okay, I don't know how to eat this. Okay, I get a bite of the green tomato. Very nice. Let me try it. Bite of the egg. Mm. It's very good. It's nice, dude. I don't know how to describe it biscuit. How would you describe a biscuit? It's something in between bread and cake. It's dense and crumbly, but savory. It goes so well with eggs. I know, and I think there's some freshness in here because of that thick slice of tomato, the, the green fried one as well. But I think the king of this dish is the sauce, dude. Yeah. Let me dip that in here. You have to submerge it. That's how they eat it here. Wow, that's a lot. It's really nice. The sauce is the best thing. Let me actually grab this uh, fried green tomato. Oh, you're just gonna try it by itself. Oh, get out of here. You're not supposed to disassemble it. There's some spice on there. I think they seasoned the tomato before they deep fry it. Or oh, it's in the batter. The batter probably. It's very nice. It comes nicely together. This is probably a lot of calories to start your day out, but it's really tasty. And I think it's probably the theme of Southern food, right? It's just tasty and gluttonous. You don't ask about the calories. Get out of here. That's true. I've never been to this place before, but I did Google biscuit and this popped up. I like the name, so that's why we went for this one. Yeah, it had very good reviews. Yeah, and I figured Phil needed to try fried green tomatoes. Mmm, yeah, that's so good. The green tomato part is just, it's before it's fully ripe and then they deep fry it. 
so it has this nice thicker denser consistency than a regular tomato which helps it hold its own kind of tastes like you're biting into something like a hard cantaloupe with a tomato flavor this is more of a brunch thing not really breakfast you go out this with friends and stuff and enjoy it but this sauce i think i'm gonna drink it too mm. The so sauce good. is amazing, the best part, it's a slightly spicy, it's slightly cheesy, it's slightly hollandaise just paired with dough, a little bit of veggies, yeah. deep fried stuff. I wish it was a poached egg, but other than that, I really love this meal. Me too, and we shared one, this thing was $14, and it's pretty heavy. Like, if you start into the day like that, I don't know if you should eat that by yourself. Yeah, that would be a lot. Um, but we have a lot more food to go for the day, so uh, that's why we're splitting a lot of these things. Yes, so amazing start with the deep fried green tomato biscuit. Is that what it's called? What is deep fried about it? Fry whatever. It was awesome, <laughs> let's keep going. So I think this is probably my favorite part about Greenville, the downtown area. They have this river flowing through it and there's some nice waterfalls right in the center. There's a good amount of animals like geese and stuff breeding here. And they built this like suspension bridge right over it. So the downtown area of Greenville, very, very walkable, very nice. Yeah, they're constantly changing it. Every time I come back, there's like a new building or a new feature and something. So, so yeah. it feels like it's kind of an up and coming city in America, at least on the East Coast. And every time something's walkable, it feels very nice to me. Yeah, it's rare though. As soon as you go outside of downtown, it's yeah. car culture. Also a lot of restaurants down here on the main street, a lot of options to get ice cream, boba and food. Uh, but for the next one, we're gonna head out again. Southern food. After this stroll through the park in downtown Greenville, we started heading towards Greenville South, passing through some of the adjacent neighborhoods. Our next stop is the most soul food place on today's journey, fittingly called Tasty Soul Food and Bar. All right, we came out of here into a little bit of the outskirts of the city of Greenville, and we went to a place called Tasty Soul Food and Bar. It's a very nice place. They have a lot of, I guess, Southern soul food, and I didn't understand half of the items on the <laughs> menu. So Deanna ordered, and what we got is this. This is a pork chop, which is, it looks deep fried, right? Yeah. Nicely battered. We asked him which ones are the most popular ones. Pork chop, one of them. They had it on the daily menu for this Friday. They changed the menu daily, which is nice about this place. So we got three sides. Um, these are the fried okras, right? Yeah. I don't know because I never had them. Then we have broccoli casserole. Yes. Nice. And collard greens, right? Yep. Wow, I got that right. I have no idea what's what, like, or what <laughs> it is. So I'm going to start with the pork chop. I'm just going to grab this with the hand. It's, uh, Pretty hot, we just got that. Yeah, they made it fresh. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. Dude, that batter is so good. I don't know, it gives me a very nice fried chicken feeling because it's the only thing I'll probably got better like this on before. But, but it's pork, come yeah, on. You're used to that in Germany. This looks like you're eating a schnitzel. <laughs> But you would never eat that with your hands, would you? That's a little bit like it is. It's a little bit like a pork schnitzel. That thing, very good, very juicy on the inside. Nice meat though, and with pork I always have the fear that it has too much cartilage, too much fat. But this one does not, or oh, I got very good pieces. You need to try fried okra. All right, fried okra. I'm not even sure, oh, I got you there, what okra is. It's some green that I'm not familiar with. It's a vegetable. Oh no, chop one and uh, it's deep fried. Dude, this is so good. If yeah. all the southern food is like this, I could like live off of this. That's what I'm saying. So very nice. Also greasy from the batter, but the inside is fresh and hot still. I love fried okra. Dude, first okra ever. Very nice, very nice. Wash that down with a bite of this cornbread. That's good too. It's like a 
warm, fresh cake bottom. Not as dry as it looks. Let me wash that down with some sweet tea. We're enjoying this so far, if you can't tell. I know, I'm so okay, jealous. Okay, which one? Collard greens? Eat. Yeah, collard greens and then you can collard go for the greens. broccoli What does casserole? collard mean? Collard, it's like, it's like a type of leafy vegetable, kind of like kale or spinach. It's a collard. That's classic. Dude, I'm back in my grandma's kitchen. Right? This like literally feels like, like a home I just had an epiphany. I just had a revelation. I, I, I think why it's called soul food now. You get it? You understand? This brings me back to my childhood. I yeah. think my grandma in the village, in the rural village side of Germany, made some fried kale stuff that tasted similar to this. Wow. Okay, last one for this amazing lunch. What is it? Uh, broccoli, broccoli casserole. casserole. It was written as broccoli cast and Phil is like, what is that? <laughs> Holy shit, man. That is, that's the best side. Right? Oh my God. What is this? I could only ever eat this from now on. This is so good. The casserole freaking amazing. The okra amazing. And the rest is really good. Like this overall meal, that's a 9.2 out of 10. Wow. Can I can't believe it, dude, that broccoli casserole. We'll have to come back. The broccoli casserole. Rah. Southern food. This is really not that familiar to us. Nothing we serve anywhere. In Germany. Not that I know of in Germany. Dude, I love it. Awesome. It's so funny seeing Phil's reaction to these things. Uh, it's, um, I don't know, it's bringing you back. You know, you, you, you want to eat something for the first time. You want to eat something amazing for the first time again. So yeah. I'm excited to give this a try. I'm just gonna cut a piece of this pork chop. Look at that, you have a nice breaded. It's nicely seasoned. You see the season in the breading. There we go. Mm. What is it about breading and frying food that just makes it so much better? I love it. Fried okra might be my favorite Southern side dish food. It's so good. Wait till you try the broccoli casserole. Mm. So fried okra is unique where it's very slimy and a lot of people don't necessarily like this texture. I personally love the slimy texture, but the, the fried outside makes a nice crisp to it. So it's just like the slimy but crunchy at the same time. Mm, so good. So collard greens, another classic southern side dish. It's very buttery, like good collard greens, you need a lot of butter to cook this down. So normally in a broccoli casserole, you have like a lot of breading, you've got some cheese in there, you have some seasoning, and it's all cooked in this giant sheet all together. Oh. And then you just kind of scoop it out and put it per person per side. So look at this, it's a nice healthy portion. Shove it in. Yes. That's so good, right? Wow. This broccoli casserole is a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. We're not shitting you. I mean, I like broccoli, but it's just a vegetable. I don't know what they do to that. That's some voodoo magic. It's so freaking good, man. It's amazing. Yeah, that is nicely seasoned too. And now that you tried it for the video and uh, we all know you lived here, the rest goes to me. Excuse Mwah. me, and show it on mine. Oh. mine. I love that. Hits my soul right there. I, I hope we get a chance to go to like Mississippi, Louisiana, some other places some at some point yeah. so you can experience other it, types of Southern cuisine. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but so far it did not disappoint. Yeah. And I'd be surprised if place number three can top this one because that was so good. But we shall see in a minute. Okay, the only little critique I have about this lunch is that <laughs> the, the price again, it's not cheap, it's $20, but then they add uh, the tax 6%, but also a convenience fee of 2%, and then another 2%, and then we also tipped 15%, so it becomes a little bit more expensive than it should be, so for one meal we paid like $24. After being blown away by how good this food was, we ventured on towards our third and final destination. Little did we know that the biggest highlight was yet to come.
So Tay was nice enough to take us back here where they prepare all the food. They have two huge smokers right here on the left and on the right. And he's just showing us a bit of the, the meat. You said this is what? This is smoked pork belly. We call it white brisket. White brisket. And the, the big rib, what do you call it? The you big call beef rib, we call it the Flintstone. The Flintstone. So that's the six, seven, eight on the rib cage of a cow. They cook by about six to seven hours, and that's some good eating. This is so marbled and like, it's like filet mignon on a stick. All right, I didn't think we can top the last two places, but I think we might have just did that. Look what's in front of me. This looks absolutely ridiculous. We got a pulled pork sandwich, which is very common to the South and Carolina barbecue. The Carolina region. Then we have the best looking beef rib I've ever seen in my life. This thing is humongous. This is 1.2 pounds of beef rib and holy cow, I'm looking forward to that. We have mac and cheese, we have cheesy potato casserole and they brought out two different kinds of sausages for us to try as well because they're a staple here. So we're gonna start with this pulled pork sandwich. It looks good. As usual, one bite without any sauce first. So here we go, Bobby's barbecue. Very juicy, it's not overcooked, it's not dry. Very nice, as you can see here, there's a little bit of different coloring to it. Very nice texture. They gave us three different sauces, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this on there. That's a mustard-based sauce. Mustard-based, it sounds good. A little bit of that. The pulled pork with these barbecue sauce is always so good. I really like the buns too, like very yellow, soft buns. I like it. Who doesn't like some nice yellow, soft buns? Exactly. That's awesome. While this car alarm goes off, uh, this pulled pork sandwich, really good. Good amount of meat on there. This is definitely one of the best pulled pork sandwiches I had so far and I really like it. But I'm just looking over to this massive thing over here. Yeah, well, you gotta try a side before you can try that. Okay. I'm gonna try this pulled pork sandwich. This is like what I usually get when I'm in the Carolinas for a barbecue. I always get a pulled pork sandwich. It's my go-to. Give it a try. Whoa, that's nice. Yeah, it's a very good sandwich. It's everything you want when you want barbecue. Yeah. All right, I wanna try this cheesy potato casserole, something I've never had. So from what I'm seeing, there's potato chunks in there, a layer of cheese sauce, and then some crunchy toppings. It's this like oven baked thing, right? Yeah. I need a sturdier spoon. That's a good spoon. The potato fill tries cheesy potato casserole for the first time. I can't get it. There's a spoonful, nice skin on, some cheese on there. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Who would have thought I like that? The nicest thing that you didn't expect is the herbs on it. It feels cheesy, it feels potato-y, but nothing is overpowering and then they season it. But the overall thing, just fantastic. Mm. I'm going to try this mac and cheese. This is what I love. This is always the side I get whenever I'm back home and I would get barbecue. Needs to come with mac and cheese for me. She's a mac and cheese person. Yeah, that's, that's, that's proper cheesy. Mm, proper cheesy. What? I've been abroad too long. <laughs> She also just called that a burger. Pulled I did pork. not. There's no film proof of that I ever called that a burger. So it's always a sandwich. I have the proof in my head. Pulled pork nope, burger. Nope, nope, that, nope. That's, that's false. I would eat a whole tub of these and then lay on the couch the rest of the day. That's nice. So here is a cheesy potato casserole. It's a little hard to eat, but check the reaction. I think you could bring this at any German grill or barbecue and people would look at it hesitantly, but then they would taste it and be like, wow, yes. that's amazing. We would eat that shit up, man. That would be gone in minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, but for the main event, look at this thing, man. So this thing you had to buy by weight and this single rib, you couldn't split this up, is one and a half pounds. That's $41. Okay, let me see if I can just rip a piece off here. Oh my God, it's glazed. Wow, look at that. Oh, it's had such a nice fatty skin and the meat inside of there. This is, I can't, I'm just gonna shut up and eat it. Yes. Bro, this might be the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> Really? Man, it's so juicy. It has this nice seared charcoal seasoned layer of skin on there. Look at that thing. And then underneath you have a little bit of fattiness and then a huge chunk of meat. I wish Phil looked at me the way he looks at this Let me just... beef rib. 
Take a big bite out of there. Bro. I think it's love. This is why we need to make more money. I want to <laughs> eat this for the rest of my life, for breakfast, lunch and dinner, and then for midnight snack as well. Holy cow, I need a smoker and I need one of these. I think I keep this warm, just having to have it there every day of my life for the rest of my life. All right, we'll leave, we'll leave them alone. We'll leave them alone to enjoy themselves. The mother load. This is huge. We ordered enough for like a village, it feels like. All right. I don't need to eat anything else in my entire life. Right? Wow. That is the appropriate amount of meat and fat and flavor. That is so good. This is what they say melts in your mouth. This is the definition of it, I think. I barely needed to chew. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah. 10 out of 10. So good. We're going to be fighting for this off camera. Yeah, she's not joking. For me, that's also a 10 out of 10. One of the best things I've ever eaten mm. in my life, hands down, any cuisine. Uh, some of the nicest meat ever. And uh, maybe there's better stuff out there in the world somewhere. I don't know. I haven't found it yet, but holy cow, man. Wow. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> I will never forget this moment in my life. <laughs> they were so nice to give us this, these full sausages. He says that all of the sausages are made in-house and uh, they look great. They're nice and thick. Look at that beautiful glaze on there. This is the jalapeno one I'm gonna ever try. Mm, mm -hmm. That is awesome. That is very, very flavorful. It's a little bit of a spicy kick to it because the jalapeno cheese going on yeah. oh I love that yeah it's a little spicy I think that's really nice I think you can get this on any German fare and it would sell out so the last thing I want to try is this dessert we just got one dessert it's banana pudding and apparently that's a very classic southern barbecue or southern Carolina dessert and it looks like it's a very light custard almost like a whipped cream or then, one would say a pudding pudding yeah and then uh, I guess we have some it looks like bread and banana chunks, or is it just banana flavored? Oh, well, give it a try. We'll find out. Find out. German's first banana pudding experience. It's a little bit like a Fruchtzwerk. <laughs> like the what little, is this? yeah, it's a little pudding in Germany. That looks fresh. Yeah, there's a yeah, chunky there banana. Go. It was hiding from you. It's almost like a cake, you know, it's layered. There's a nice layer of this cake bottom, banana layer, whipped cream layer. I give this like a solid seven and a half out of 10, but uh, if you come, we can have that, but have the meat first. This is what's important. You forgot to mention, there's like cookie wafers in there that give it a nice crunchy texture to the banana pudding. Right. Yeah, this is nice, especially after all that meat. You need some just like cream and lightness to after put it all down. After all that meat, you need some cream. Mm. There we go. All right, so that was definitely a great experience. That rip, that Flintstone was one of the best things I've ever eaten, hands down. So if you're in this area, the Fountain Inn area here at around Simpsonville, and you come to Bobby's Barbecue, highly recommend it. And if you do so, let them know that uh, you come because we recommend it you too. Big thank you to you. Thank you. It means a lot. It's an honor to have you out here. We will definitely be back. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> this could not have turned out better. Some of the best and most amazing food that I've experienced. I'm so glad that we did that. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I'm so glad you get to try real Southern food. I've tried a lot of uh, new restaurants and uh, it's incredible. If you go to any of these places, let them know you saw this video. Yeah, the US just leveled up food wise. Holy cow. Yeah. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Flintstone is the uh, fitting, is a very fitting name for that. Like, I feel like flat Flintstone. Yes! I feel like Fred Flintstone, like just holding it and biting into it. Eating with the hands is also so much fun.